For any Xbox or PlayStation codes or cheap games on any platform, use the referral link in the description. It'll take you to G2A.com. Use the promo code CHEZ over there and you'll get yourself 3% cash back. Also, I've got a new merchandise store, hats, hoodies and new tee designs all available right now on the link in the description. Hey guys, welcome to episode number two of the Career Mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 17. Thank you for the fantastic response to episode number one yesterday. Plenty of likes, hundreds of comments and uh, some great feedback. So thank you very much for that. This is obviously going to be the episode where we push forward a little bit. We've obviously taken some of your suggestions on board from episode number one. That's why this one's coming out a little bit later than the normal schedule. I've got loads of players on the shortlist and please do continue to give me as many suggestions as you possibly can in the comment section down below with regards to players to look at. Bear in mind, we don't have that much money available to us. About £500,000 in the transfer budget and about £15,000, one five. Uh, in the wage budget so there's not much to play with but there are plenty of players we could potentially either bring in on loan or look to sign for minimal fees so that is the plan for this opening transfer window and then obviously trying to train and grow the players that we currently have I have used the scout future star I have gone into the EA Sports Football Club and used one so we will be finding out in due course what position that Scout Future Star will be playing in. And that could be vital with regards where we look to strengthen elsewhere in the side. Got a couple of options here at goalkeeper that uh, came up. Dimitris Kyriakidis is uh, 29 years old. He's a free agent. And uh, he's, was he six foot four? I think he was. Oh, only six foot, but still. Uh, the diving and handling looks a little bit better than the rest. A lot of these players, in fact, I think every single one of these players still needs... Uh, a little bit of scouting so we can find out exactly what their overalls and individual stats are. So it might be an episode or two before we find ourselves actually finalising any moves. But obviously I want to take on your guys' suggestions. That's how I run my series on this channel. If you're new to the channel for this series, then uh, basically what I do is I take my time in the transfer window. So I don't rush through. We take our time. I take on board all of your suggestions and I try and sign as many players that you guys want me to sign as possible. So uh, that's how we run series on this channel. And uh, that's how we will continue to run series on this channel. We also have Alessandro Confente. Uh, he's currently at Kieva. Reflexes look very good, actually. The rest, again, waiting to be seen. But he's only 18 years of age. We do have only uh, a 22-year-old uh, in goal, of course, in the uh, in the shape of Will Norris, who will grow quite well. He can grow up upwards of 71, 72. So with a lot of training, we could genuinely just make him world class and that is the plan I think but I would like a backup keeper that's slightly better than the current backup keeper we have at present Dion Kelly Evans was a popular suggestion for right back his tackling stats or just all of his technical stats don't look that good as of yet but when you have a decent physical base to start from with a youngster you can always train at the technicals so he might be a genuine option at right back Felix Paslak was someone that you guys reckoned I should try and loan probably unrealistic in that I'm 99.7% sure that in real life Bayern, Dor Bayern Dortmund well done, Chez. Borussia Dortmund wouldn't even consider sending him out on loan to a League 2 side in England but it is a game after all and uh, if we think we might be able to get a deal like that done then maybe that's something we could look into uh, I would try perhaps try in these earlier seasons to uh, look more domestic though with regards actual transfers free agents I I'll sign anyone from any country but perhaps in the uh, in the early stages, considering that's kind of the way things tend to go in uh, in the lower leagues in England, perhaps we'll primarily look for domestic signings. But with regards to youth players and free agents, I'll sign from anywhere. Uh, Courtney Howes, a centre back that you guys recommended, twenty years of age. He's quite tall as well, isn't he? Six foot two, yeah. So uh, he could play at left back also. Very very good strength at just twenty years of age, and it looks like his technicals could be pretty decent in the most important defensive stats too. So he's definitely one to look at. Another popular one was Jerome Junior Onguene from uh, from I think is that the French league? Not sure. Yeah, Socho is in the uh, in the French leagues. He was actually quite popular. Obviously, I've just said that I'd perhaps try and sign more domestic, and I would still lean towards that. But he was one of the most popular options. So uh, we might kind of break that rule every now and again and uh, bring in a player from overseas. Again, another player from overseas, Robert Pierre, a centre-back from Levante. Don't know anything about him, so uh, we will have to wait and see what his stats look like. Glenn Ree is uh, a Luton Town, a rival of Cambridge United. Very big rival of Cambridge United. But if we can steal away one of our rival's best players, and if he's 
decent enough when his stats come back, then perhaps that's something we could look to do. Faitu Moasa. I get apologies if I uh, pronounced that wrong, but uh, he looks like a half decent left back, only 17 years of age as well. Again, in the French leagues, so seemingly we're turning into Newcastle United by looking at loads of players from uh, from the France. But uh, he could be okay. Again, a lot of these players will need training, but that's fine. That's the whole aim of this series, isn't it? A road to glory is to get lower rated players, train them up, and try and bring through as many players as possible, and then sell those guys on if possible later down the line for uh, big money to bring in better players that uh, start off at the higher rated uh, signings. Uh, Dara Lenihan is uh, another option at central midfield. One CDM we've got on the list currently. Uh, I'm not sure what his value would be. Being at Blackburn, he might be on a little bit more wage-wise. In fact, I can probably check what he's on wage-wise. And that might be a bit of an issue. No, he's only on five and a half. Okay, that's definitely manageable. Definitely manageable. We'll have to wait and see what his exact stats are. But I might be keen on bringing in another, another central midfielder. There are loads of suggestions for uh, wide players. Adrian Popa is uh, a free agent currently, 27 years of age, so a little bit older, but physicals look very good. And again, technicals could probably do with a little bit of training, but 27, there's still two or three years worth of growth there available. Josh Clark is very popular with you guys, 21 years of age, acceleration, speed, agility and balance all in uh, his highest rated stats. So looks like he could be quite decent. Again, we'll have to wait for the scout report. Emery Moore, understandably one of the most popular young signings in uh, career mode this year. Again, as with Felix Paslak, definitely don't think that he'd be coming to uh, Cambridge United in real life. But maybe we could look into him in season two or three as we get higher up the leagues. I don't, I don't think it, they'd even let him come to me anyway if I... Uh, uh, tried to sign him whilst we were here in uh, League 2. Uh, still some more midfielders. We have uh, Alejandro Chumacero, who uh, actually looks pretty uh, pretty decent. Kind of an all-rounder by the looks of things. He doesn't really excel anywhere other than balance. But uh, it looks like he could just you know be a decent squadron player. And at 25, again, plenty of room for growth. So we'll contemplate going in for him. Uh, Archimedes Figuera is another kind of all-round centre mid that looks half decent in the pass and half decent in the tackle. Again, in his mid-twenties, so a good option. Dean Furman in his late twenties, but still, all of the midfielders that you guys have suggested seem to be able to uh, to play like they, they look like they'll be decent going forward and pretty solid defensively, which is the sort of midfielder that I like. So uh, you guys know me quite well. John Lundstrom is a popular suggestion for central midfield as well from Oxford, another local-ish rival of Cambridge United, more because of the the boat race in the universities more so than uh, than locality, but still. Cambridge-Oxford is quite a big game whenever it comes around. Emmanuel Osadebe is another central midfielder. Looks like he could, pretty good, could be pretty good physically. I hope that his technical stats are uh, pretty decent. Then maybe, maybe we could look into him. Ryan Ledson is uh, at Oxford currently. Is he on loan at Oxford or is he? No, it looks like they've signed him. Okay, so uh, he was on loan at Cambridge United last season in real life from Everton. And he's moved to Oxford permanently. Oxford are in League One. They got promoted last year out of League Two. So uh, he might be quite reluctant to join us, but... We know that he's a good player and has plenty of room for growth. So it's definitely a potential. Nicolas Yanvier, again, shock from the French leagues. Uh, not too sure about him, to be completely honest. We'll have to wait and see what his individual stats are when they uh, get finalised. But uh, his low strength doesn't necessarily fill me with confidence. But we'll have to wait and see. I don't, I don't really want to unnecessarily judge someone before I can have a proper look at their, their stats in closer detail. With regards to the right-hand side of midfield, we have Gabriel and Nash who's uh, a free agent in his mid-twenties. He looks pretty pretty capable, actually. So I might genuinely be looking into him. Uh, Jonathan Lecco, he destroyed me in uh, the... I think it was the Everton series in Season 2 for West Brom. So I, I have some previous with him. So if I could get him on my team so that I'm not playing against him, then maybe that might be something that would be uh, of an uh, advantageous situation to us. Vachav Cherny, I've no idea how to pronounce that. I apologise. But uh, he's a popular suggestion. Again, though, not really too sure whether Ajax would be willing to let him come to a League 2 side. And with regards to the left-hand side of midfield, Ben Woodburn, a youngster at Liverpool, only 16 years of age, but looks like ball control, finishing, and his physical stats could be pretty tasty already at just 16. So might look to loan him with uh, perhaps the view to signing him permanently later down the line if his stats continue to improve. With regards to striking role, Devante Cole was popular, uh, currently at Fleetwood, only young at 21. Connor Chaplin, 19 years of age at Portsmouth, would be uh, keen on having a look at his stats in closer detail. I know nothing about Florian Aie, but again, 
from Auxerre in the French leagues. So seems to be quite a popular uh, country for good youth prospects. And then we couldn't really not add Quezzi Appiot onto the list, could we? He was at Cambridge twice, may even been three times. No, I think it was twice in... Uh, in real life, two separate loan spells. We had him in the Road to Glory we did with Cambridge on FIFA 15, and he was influential throughout that entire series. We had him at the club, and he was kind of my top goal scorer for like the first two or three seasons. Then we sold him and ended up bringing him back again in like season six or seven. So if I can bring Quezzi in, then that would be a nice homage to the original Career Mode Road to Glory we did with Cambridge United back in the day. And uh, I'd be quite keen on bringing Quezzi in, to be completely honest. So that's the situation at present with the suggestions that you guys have made. And we will push forward now and actually play uh, a couple of games with uh, with the team, just to see how we get on with the 4-4-2 formation with the current squad that we have. We have Dundalk, uh, Vaduz and Lugano in our group stage. And the other half of the draw are Kilmarnock, Songdale, uh, Sundsvall and FC Thun. So I'm not really too sure how I ex how well I expect to do in this tournament, but the extra money will really come in handy. So uh, we'll try and do as best as we possibly can. And we'll jump into that first game now. Do drop the video a like if you're enjoying. Subscribe to the channel too and hit that notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on any further episodes of this series or the My Player series or the career Ma of the Ultimate Team Road to Glory series. And there may even probably will be having another series starting around about Christmas time with uh, Kizzle Kicks. If you remember, we did a co-op career mode on his channel last year, and uh, we're looking into starting that up again this year. So uh, that would be this year on my channel and his channel, rather than just his channel. So there's a lot going on right now, but hopefully you guys are looking forward to this career mode road to glory. You seem to be very keen on it with uh, the response on the first episode, so hopefully you guys will respond well to the second episode. Let's play some games, shall we? Vigils. Mingoya into Bradley Halliday. I've got runners coming from deep. Here's Luke Berry. Good turn. We'll pull this back to Harrison Dunk. May even try a shot on the left foot. Oh my god! What a way to start. Two and a half minutes in. Harrison Dunk flies that one into the far top corner. Dream start for Cambridge United in the first friendly. Halliday into Berry. Good turn. Sets up Dunk. Takes his touch. Bangs it into the far top corner. Keep that up. Oh my god. I couldn't be happier if you haven't liked the video already. I think that deserves a thumbs up. Wow. Very. Ben Williamson up to Uche. Williamson making the run. Slot him in. Try and utilise the pace. He's round the defender. Ben Williamson for two. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Great strike from the edge of the box. I didn't see him hitting that first time, so I wasn't commentating. But... <laughs> But he's very close to an equaliser there. He just laid it inside and he gave it a good old crack from the edge of the box. And that one wasn't too far away either. Keeper was flying towards it, but wider the target, thankfully. Well, Vadu's letting us know that should they get given the opportunity, they could get the equaliser if the uh, feeling took them. It's a nice ball through. Really Halliday coming back here. Fell, fell in the box. Oh, drilled in. That's a lovely goal. Advi just sweeps it home. Not much Will Norris could do about that. That was a delicious ball across the box. Halliday tried to outmuscle him, couldn't. And, well, the ball, uh, the ball in was just so good. All he had to do was get it on target, which he duly obliged in doing. It's 1-1. One, one. Oh, that's a good ball in. Liam Legg heads away. Oh, he's gone for the rocket. Not far away. Fell fell with a very good hit. That would have been most definitely better than, uh, <laughs> better than the goal in the first half from Harrison Dunk. I've made a few changes at half-time. Brought on uh, Mediolito on the right and Connor Newton in midfield. Also brought on Barry Kaur up top for Ute Pizu. So we'll have to wait and see if those changes can help us get the lead back again. But so far in this second half, been very much <laughs> all one way towards my goal. Let's try and get it up the other way towards theirs, shall we? Oh, ref, that was a bit late. Barry here into Kaur, into Williamson. Go back out to Mediolito. We'll try and cross it, looking for Barry Core in the middle, who's underneath it. Oh, header down towards the bottom corner, but Sigrist with a comfortable save. Final whistle goes. It's a 1-1 draw against Vaduz. Our stunning opening goal, unfortunately, wasn't enough to give us all three points in the first group stage game. But a convincing performance, a good enough performance, I think, to uh, give us some confidence going forward. Lugano beat Dundalk by three goals to nil, so they will top the group after that first game. We'll uh, jump back to the transfer window, see if anything happens. If not, we'll head into the second game. Corner for Lugano to come in from that far side. Floated into the box. Who's going to win that? It's going to drop. Oh, 
save from Will Norris. Great reactions. Pichinoki into Irazi. Wide of the target. Brushing the side netting. Lugano have been very difficult to play against so far. I can barely get out of my own half. Run to Blair Adams. Let's go back to Gosling. Adams got crunched there, but we'll, we'll play on. Dunn will look through there for Williamson, who could poke that there. Looking for Piero Mingoya. Oh, who hits the bar? How has he got that? Oh, Jake Gosling, you would. How has Piero Mingoya not been able to get that on target? He's just got his foot right underneath it, and it's flown up off the underside of the bar. My first chance of the game, and we very nearly took a 1-0 lead. Clark gets a tackle in, and he's done well to turn the second defender as well. I've got Uche in front of me. We'll slot through Uche here, just before half-time. Uche gives us a 1-0 lead. Lugano have dominated this first half, but Ute Piazzu gives us a 1-0 lead on the brink of half-time. He's literally just scored for Cambridge in real life as well at home against Crewe this afternoon. And now he scored for me in the career mode. 1-0 Cambridge. Uche, you're running the wrong way, mate. I need you to go towards goal. Thank you very much. Play 1-2 here with James Dunn. Max Clark, get it back to Dunn. He's in the box now. James Dunn for two. Come on, mate. Let's tackle by Gosling. Just trying to get away from the defenders, but it's not worked. Oh, James Dunn just completely ignores the ball. He's not having a very good 10-minute spell here, James Dunn. He is about to leave the field of play as well. But clearly, his lack of stamina is causing his brain to not work as well as his legs are starting to fall away too. And that could cause me problems if squared it back. <gasps> what a save! Oh, my God. Will Norris. How has he done that? How, genuinely, how has he done that? Wow, I hit him in the face. What a save. That's ridiculous. 1-0 up still with 25 minutes to go. Changes have been made and they've headed wide. Unbelievable. Final whistle goes. Despite Lugano being arguably the better side for the majority of the game, we come away with a 1-0 victory. That should, depending on the other result in the group, put us through to the knockout stages of this pre-season tournament. Thanks in no small part to Will Norris in between the sticks. Four shots, two on target for us in the one goal. Ten and five for them, but no goals. Dundalk and Vaduz draw 1-1. One, one. So Vaduz are on two points, Dundalk are on one, Lugano are on three, and we're on four. And we face Dundalk next. So that's pretty much us guaranteed through to the knockout stages, which will, of course, give us some more prize money, which will come in very handy for this pre-season transfer window. We've got nine plus emails. Hopefully some of those are scout reports. And indeed they are. That's very, very good news. Max Clark, I had a couple of a contracts actually accepted there, didn't I as well? Let's have a quick look. It was George Maris and David Gregory. Now, Gregory, I'm actually look, or interested in looking to move out, but as in move out of the club. So I'll go and put him on the list. I'll have a look at these scout reports and then I will show you what their stats look like in a moment once I've made a decision as to which ones I'm going to go after. After going through and having a look at all of the various different squad reports, I'm going to throw in contracts and loan bids for a couple of players. I'm going to try and offer uh, Gabriela Nash a contract. Uh, also interested in Dean Furman as well at centre mid. He looks pretty damn tasty. Could be good enough to help us get out of League 2 and League 1. Uh, considerably good player by the looks of things. Much better than anything else we've got. Jerome Junior Onguene does actually look pretty decent. So uh, at 18 years of age, I'm pretty sure I'm going to try and get him in on loan. I don't think I'm going to be able to afford to buy him unless, of course, we can go further in the preseason tournament and get a little bit more uh, money. With regards uh, a few other players, I was kind of keen on Chimacero, but at strength of 24 and he's only five foot five. Don't think I'm going to get on with a player like that, unfortunately. Uh, this guy, Figuera, seems OK, but Dean Furman is definitely better. And then with regards to other players further down that were listed for loan, uh, I might go in for Jonathan Lecco on loan as well. So we'll have to wait and see. But I think Lecco, Furman and um, Ngueme, and then who's the other guy? Anash. I think they're going to be the four slash five that I go for initially. And I'm still kind of leaning towards getting a right back as well. But at present... Uh, a good enough right back hasn't presented himself. However, there is that guy from Coventry, the right wing back, who is Dion Kelly Evans. Although his tackling stats really don't look like they're going to be that good at all. So 
Uh, I think I'm going to need to get a right back for, suggested from you guys, but I'm going to go and offer some contracts to the guys, these guys now, and uh, then we'll come back in the next episode and see what happens. That's going to bring today's to a close, though. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel too, and hit that notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on any more of this series. But for now, that's all from me for this afternoon. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.